the technology that Zscaler acquired with Avalord is sort of twofold. It runs at two levels. One is the data fabric, which I'm going to walk you through. And then one is at the application layer. What are the modules or solutions that can take advantage of that data fabric? And the cool thing is that in a Zscaler context, there are many, many more applications that we can work on much more quickly to take advantage of the data fabric. So looking at it from a vulnerability perspective and from the perspective of the data fabrics operations. So first off, starting with data feeds, right? We're gonna populate this data fabric with information. So we have pre-built connectors into a variety of data sources. The first is a set of vulnerability feeds that you would expect to be part of a vulnerability management program, right? The scanning finds from a, a tenable Aqualis a Rapid. And then you want not just to have the CVEs and the CVSS score of those CVEs, but you also want to understand, is it getting exploited in the wild? And so you want threat intel feeds to make that exploit data uh, paired with the CVE data so you know which ones to worry about. This is fairly fundamental and crucial, but we would say, you know, certainly not everything you want. And so what we bring to the table is connectors into you know, 150 other systems that give you many more other kinds of security findings, gap findings, you know, where do you have a security gap and context. So it might be business context, behavior context, things like that. So you can see across this smattering of example logos, we're talking about cloud insights and app dev insights, what's happening in the Zscaler infrastructure on ZTE, on the Zero Trust Exchange, for example, you see an asset, count their EDR tools, all of this, this context really informs a lot more about what's happening in the environment. So all of these discrete little data points, we call them entities, come into the data fabric. And the magic of the data fabric is in stitching that all together, in seeing the connections amongst those things, in seeing that this and this and this are all the same asset, but each tool brings a little bit more of the picture about what's happening with that asset bringing that all together, deduplicating the findings, correlating the findings, and enriching the findings. This is where we really learn to understand what's happening in the environment. That's the work of the data fabric for security. And that will underlie a variety of solutions, as I mentioned. And today, what we're doing is bringing that into reports and workflows oriented around improving vulnerability management. So when you have this level of context, let's look at a real world example of the ramifications of that. You might have a couple of assets that have CVEs with the same score, okay? Uh, but if you, on the one hand, you learn from one of these assets that it's got, you know, CrowdStrike's loaded and it's sitting in dev. Okay, I'm worried a lot less about that particular finding, but I could have the same kind of finding with a similar score and then learn, okay, this one's actually open to the internet, my Sysikev database tells me that there's a known exploit against it. I learn from DSPM or my uh, identity information that this is a user or a system that has access to PII. And maybe I'm watching my results out of Proofpoint or know before, and I learn, oh my gosh, this user consistently fails phishing tests and clicks on those links all the time. This is a very different profile. And now I'm much more concerned about that same vulnerability that initially looked fairly benign. Now I'm more concerned about um, the opportunity for that to pose a problem and put my information and my systems at risk. So this is all handled, this, this prioritization of sort of what increases and decreases risks, the risk factors and the mitigating controls. This is all codified in our platform and we give you a starting point because a blank slate is super hard. It creates too much work. So we come out of the gate with an opinionated idea of what it what should look risky, but then we let you manipulate that at any point at any time to adjust it for your definition. So if the base score tied to vulnerability information, maybe you don't want to weight that as highly. Maybe you want to increase the weighting for your, your mitigating controls and your risk factors. You have all the ability to do that. And you can set your parameters for how you want these calculations to happen. And don't worry about whether in a given instance you do or don't have a given piece of data. The math will still work even if a single data point isn't present for it. But overall, you get your, your overall uh, view and definition of what is risky applied across all of the findings.